Director of Missions for the Keystone Association of Churches is here. He's, uh, been, he's been a missionary overseas for 28 years with his wife, and now he's here to bring uh, God's message to us. Brad, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Good morning. It is great to be here with you. All right. So, uh, like the pastor said, we've served with the International Mission Board for 28 years. And uh, actually, next month will be our, our last uh, month we re uh, retire with the International Mission Board after 28 years. So, it, it's been exciting. Uh, a lot of time overseas. I spent two years in South Korea, in the city of Busan. So if you served in the military, you might have heard of that city. Uh, I, then we spent uh, 26 years in uh, Russia. So uh, how, how many of you, have any of you been to Russia? Just curious. Nobody. You hear about Russia a lot, uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, what it's like there. But I can tell you firsthand what it's like. Uh, one way to know what it's like uh, to, be, um, to live in Russia is to understand their humor. Now, uh, let me tell you, uh, this is kind of the, the Russian humor. Uh, since we're talking about freedom and Fourth of July and how much freedom we have, I'll tell you what it's like in, in Russia through this uh, joke. Uh, there is a, an American and a Russian, and they're arguing with each other, who has more freedom? The American said, well, I have so much freedom, I can go to the White House, I can go into the Oval Office, and I can pound on Donald Trump's desk and I'm going to say, I disagree with everything that Donald Trump stands for. And the Russian looked at him and said, well, I can do that. I can go into Vladimir Putin's office, and I can pound on his desk, and I can say, I disagree with everything that Donald Trump stands for. <laughs> so that's the kind of freedom that we have versus the freedom that, that they have. Uh, I have heard of many people that have been arrested, and not, not for uh, sharing Christ, but for... Um, uh, just protesting and things like that. So today I want to talk a little bit about uh, freedom and what it's like to have freedom versus uh, Russia and uh, having freedom there. Um, Americans have a lot of freedom. We have a lot of freedom. Um, and I'll just tell you a, a story. Uh, December 26, uh, 1991, the communist regime fell. You remember that? It made the news. And exactly about a year and a half after that, it was July 4th, 1993, 27 years ago, uh, my wife and I get on an airplane uh, and we fly in to Khabarovsk, Russia. It's in the Far East. If you know where Moscow is, it would be eight days on a train or seven hours on a plane uh, east. That's where we lived. We, we rode in on the airplane with another couple, uh, Chu Han uh, Yi and his wife Kay, and we didn't know them very well. We knew that they served with the International Mission Board. And uh, when we got off the plane, we got to know them a little bit. And uh, he was a cardiologist from uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. And he told me his story. He said, I grew up in South Korea, and uh, in 19, remember uh, the Korean War was there. And so he was five years old when the Korean War ended. Uh, he was south of the DMZ, the militarized zone, with his mother. His brother and his father ended up in the north. They were cut off, and he never saw his brother again. So at age 60, uh, Chu Han and his wife uh, Kay, they go to Russia, and uh, we did not know it at the time, but he was uh, helping North Koreans to escape from uh, uh, North Korea and he was helping them in Russia. Well, so we, we didn't know all of this at the time. We just thought that he was serving uh, as a cardiologist in the local hospital. And, uh, but later we did learn his story. He would help them uh, when they escaped. Somehow, I don't know how he did this, but uh, he helped them. He put them in uh, what they call a dacha, a little house. Uh, it's like a, a farmhouse outside the city. And he gave them Bibles, he gave them Christian literature, and, and several North Koreans accepted Christ in that. Well, somebody found out about it uh, from the North Korean government, and they sent in uh, a hitman. 
And so uh, he befriended them. He said, I've escaped. And really, he was with the, the secret police from North Korea. And uh, Chu Han and Kay, they did not come to church for two weeks. And uh, people called, people went over to uh, their, their apartment, and they never answered the door. And so uh, a friend of mine, uh, David Hendrick, he goes to their door with uh, two policemen, two Russian policemen. They knock on the door, and of course, they didn't answer, and they had to break down the door. And uh, Chu Han uh, was in his office, and he had uh, been there for at least several days, uh, maybe weeks. And uh, anyway, he was beaten to death, and his wife, uh, Kay, uh, she was in the bedroom. She was strangled to death. But I tell you that, and that we have freedom here in America to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That is not so in Russia. That is not so in North Korea, especially. Um, they gave their life. And I know Chu Han, Yi, and Kay, and they would do it all again. Because they changed eternity for several North Koreans. Changed their eternity. So it, it's, uh, it's uh, a great story, because, but a uh, sad story, but uh, they, they gave their lives, and it's in, just incredible. So let me tell you uh, about uh, Moscow. Uh, just yesterday, 500 people died in Moscow. 500 people. And you know that 99.5% of those who die do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Every day, 500 people in the city of 16 million, and that's double the size of New York City. They die every day without Christ. Faith comes from where? Hearing. Hearing. That's right. They haven't heard. They haven't accepted the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, this morning, I want you to help me a little bit. I want you to help me in preaching this sermon. So when I point to you like this, I want you to say, do whatever it takes. Okay? Let's try that. Do whatever, do whatever it takes. Okay. Do whatever it takes. Some people have to go overseas to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Some people have to go next door to share the good news of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that, uh, you know, communism uh, fell and uh, there was freedom in Russia. But later, uh, just three years ago, the Duma, which is like our Congress here in the United States, they passed a, a law on terrorism. This law uh, was mainly directed at terrorists, but also the law was directed at uh, people like us, people of faith. Uh, they called it a law on religion. And so uh, several years ago, they passed this law, and you cannot share your faith with a non-believer. So if you are in Russia, you're Russian or you're an American in Russia, you cannot, it's illegal for you to share your faith with a non-believer. Secondly, uh, you cannot have a religious meeting in your apartment or your house. Third, you cannot pass out Christian literature anywhere to anybody. It's a law and religion. You have to buy a law and um, I, I struggled with that several years ago when I was living in Moscow. Uh, at first, I was, we didn't know what was going to happen. Are they going to arrest all the Christians who were sharing? And uh, I kind of went underground for a little while just because I, I was fearful of what they were going to do to me. Are they going to arrest me? And uh, after about six months, we realized that they had the law, but they really uh, had no way of enforcing it. And so uh, we started to share. We, we were breaking the law almost every day in the way we shared. We had Bible studies in our apartments, uh, and we gave out uh, Christian literature uh, to not on the street, but just the people that we knew that wanted to uh, buy them. So uh, there is freedom here in America, and we can celebrate that, but there is not uh, freedom, especially in, in, in Russia and other closed countries. Uh, this morning, we are going to uh, read Mark, if you have your Bible, we're gonna read Mark chapter two, verses one, through 12. I think we're going to put it up on the uh, screen. This morning we're going to look at the uh, quality of uh, uh, these five guys. How many of you have ever been to Five Guys Restaurant? Yeah, you like their hamburgers? Better than Chick-fil-A? No. Okay. All right, good. All right, Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. You're probably very familiar with this story. 
uh, but let me read it. And again, he entered into Capernaum. Uh, after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. So there's no room in the house. Uh, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. So Jesus is preaching to them in this house. And they came unto him, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. So four guys are carrying this uh, invalid. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. So they're, they're digging through the roof of this uh, house. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. So they let him down in front of everyone. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee? Or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all. Insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it of this fashion. In 1989, I was about 21, uh, 22 years old. I was in South Korea, and I had never shared my faith. So I had graduated college, and I had never shared my faith with a non-believer. And I was with a missionary, and he said, uh, I want you to go over to this lady on this bench. We were at the university, and I want you to share your faith. And I was in shock. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. But he said it, and so I did it. <laughs> I went over there, and I sat with that girl, and I was probably an idiot. I didn't know what to say, and, and I was just, you know. Uh, uh, so anyway, I, I shared with her, and I came back, and I remember that uh, I, I was not prepared. I was not prepared. I didn't know what to say. It was my first time. I was nervous. I didn't have a relationship with her. But I did it. I was obedient. And I, I went to share. Not because I wanted to. But it was the right thing to do. And so I did it. And it started a journey for me. A journey of uh, wanting to know how to share wanting to know why I should share, and uh, with whom I should share. And so it started a journey. And so uh, today we're going to talk about these, these five guys. And uh, it's, it's four guys who are carrying this invalid uh, who could not walk. And so uh, anyway, first of all, we see in, in verse 3, it says, And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. So, you have four guys carrying this invalid. Um, some of you have served in the army. How do, they, how do they carry someone if you're injured? On a stretcher, right? On a stretcher. Uh, sometimes it's two, and sometimes it's four. It's easier when it's four. <laughs> um, you can struggle with two if the guy's real heavy. Uh, and so they carry them on a, on a stretcher. So that's probably the way that they carry this invalid. Uh, they didn't have wheelchairs back then, so this, this is the way they carry it. And, and they take them. You know, fr good friends take their friends to whom? To Jesus. To Jesus. Friends take their friends to Jesus. Uh, have you ever, ever heard of the term BFF? If you're on Facebook, you might know that. What does BFF stand for? Best friends forever. Be best friends forever if you take someone to Jesus. Be, be a real, true 
BFF, take your friends to Jesus. So good friends take their friends to Jesus. Okay? Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. That's right. Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. All right. So they were stretcher bearers. How many of you have ever been a pole bearer? Pole bearer. Okay. What's a pole? The pole is the heavy cloth that goes on top. Uh... Uh, they used to do that all the time. I don't know if they do it uh, now, if that's prevalent. But anyway, it's this cloth that they put over it, and that's the, the pall. And so you are burying the, the, the pall, the pallbearer. Pallbearer carries someone who is alive or someone who has deceased. Yeah, someone who's died, right? So we want to share Jesus. We want to be sh stretcher bearers. Okay? You want to be a stretcher bearer, not a pall bearer. Pall bearer is too late. Stretcher bearer, the guy is, is still alive. He's hurting. He's desperate. He's depressed. He needs Jesus. So we want to be stretcher bearers where we can take them to Jesus. Um, these four guys, they volunteered to become stretcher bearers. And we need to be stretcher bearers instead of pall bearers. A couple of years ago, this lady came up to me, and this was in Russia. Um, she came up to me and she said, my son speaks English, and he wants to practice his English. Can you meet with him? And by the way, he's not a believer. I said, sure, I would love to. His name is, of course, Vladimir. Uh, not Putin, but Vladimir. And so I said, sure, I'd love to. And I met him at a pizza restaurant on the main street. And so I started to share with him. I uh, shared with Vlad, I said, Vlad, you know, your mom's a believer, and, and he basically knew the gospel. And so I shared with him, and I said, do you want to pray and receive Jesus right now? He said, man, I, I'm desperate. I need Jesus in my heart. I need forgiveness. And so he prayed before they served our pizza in this pizza parlor. And uh, uh, so I started meeting with Vladimir, and about two weeks later, he comes to me and he says, uh, Brad, I need some help. I said, okay, what do you need? He said, uh, I'm dating someone, her name is Vika, and uh, I wanted to share with her about Jesus, but I didn't know what to say. And I said, yeah, you guys come over on Friday night, uh, my wife and I uh, will cook something, and we can eat, and we can uh, talk to her about Jesus. And so we did, uh, they came over, we had uh, some, some dinner in our house, and we, I remember sitting on the living room floor, and Vika has all these questions about what does it mean to be a Christian? What's it mean to follow Christ? And so we were sharing. And I remember uh, as we were sitting with our legs crossed, uh, she said, can, can I become a Christian now? She got up on her knees, and we got on our knees, and she prayed to receive Christ. And, and Vlad, Vladimir and Vika, uh, they became uh, new believers. And, we, and so we were like stretcher bearers. We were like taking them to Jesus. And it's uh, just a wonderful uh, thing to do. Anyway, so, do whatever it takes. All right, do whatever it takes. Uh, they were also, uh, they had freedom. They had the freedom to do that uh, back then. But later on, uh, Peter stood uh, and, they, and they said, you should not witness anymore. And he says, well, you know, we're going to follow God instead of what man says. And uh, basically, that's what I did a couple of years ago in, in Russia, was uh, I had to follow God instead of what the, the law said. And I've talked with several Chinese pastors, and they said, we do our discipleship in jail. He said, sometimes people come to a church, and as they leave, the police are waiting, and they will arrest them. And they do discipleship in jail. So we have lots of freedom here in the United States that uh, sometimes we just don't understand what kind of freedom we have. And I, I've seen it over the years, it's getting, uh, the door is closing to that freedom. So um, next, the, uh, these four guys, they were persistent. They didn't give up. Look in uh, verse 4. When they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. You give up easily when you come to an obstacle 
in sharing your faith? Is it easy? I met with a guy named Max a couple of years ago, Maxine, and I started sharing with him. And it was meeting once a week, sometimes for an hour, sometimes two, sometimes for, uh, I met with him one time, six hours. I was exhausted. But I was just pouring into him. I met with him every week for about a year. And then after a year, I said, Max, I went to seminary for four years. I, I uh, have told you everything I know. I, I, I don't know what else to share with you. And he was reading the Bible and studying it and asking questions. And uh, finally I said, Max, you know, um, I'm, I'm about ready to give up. And a couple of weeks later, uh, he called me and he said, Brad, you're not going to believe me uh, uh, if I tell you this. But I was laying on my bed at 7 o'clock at night. We just had dinner. And so uh, he was laying on his bed at night. And he said, uh, I just felt this peace in my life as I gave my life to Christ. And I, I just started crying. I said, finally, <laughs> finally, finally, you know, just being persistent in sharing the gospel. You've got to not give up and be persistent. Keep on pushing. You know, for 25 years, I went around and talked with pastors, Russian pastors, and trying to get them to, to start churches and have evangelizations. And uh, uh, it was like rolling a, a large rock, a large boulder up a hill. If you've ever done that, it's almost impossible. Uh, you've got just to, to push, use all your strength to push it. And so uh, I did that for 25 years. About three years ago, I met some guys, and I, there's five Russian guys, that actually. And, uh, and they had this vision of starting churches. I said, well, let's start a church. And they said, no. Let's start five. Let's start five. It starts five. And I said, I can, I can join that. I mean, I, I can get on with that. And so, yes, do whatever it takes. That's right. And, uh, and so we started a, a church a couple of years ago. Uh, and this was um, the closest Protestant church to Red Square. Uh, if you want, I can show you a picture on my phone of uh, out our window, what we looked at was St. Basil's Cathedral, if you know what that is. It's the most famous church in Russia. You've seen pictures of it. And we baptized about 100 yards away from Red Square, uh, four stories down in a sauna. And uh, anyway, you go down these four stories uh, in this elevator that uh, only one guy had the key to. Uh, you couldn't do it by yourself. And you walk through this corridor, and then this is four stories on the ground. And so there was a, a hallway, basically, wider than this church building right here. And I said, why, why is this huge hallway four stories underground? And he says, oh, that, that goes to the ground. I said, oh. He said, you can't go there. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so we baptized there. And it was just incredible. The, the water in the, in the sauna was freezing. Every time, you know, you get in and it's up to your chest, you just can't breathe. But... It, it was a joy to see uh, people being baptized there. Um, we have to do whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. That's right. Uh, these guys were very creative in, in, you know, getting this guy to Jesus. You know, the Son of God was, was preaching. He was sharing the gospel with them. But it's not recorded. What's recorded? This story of this crippled man who was healed. But none of Jesus' words were there. They're not recorded. So let me ask you a question. They were creative. If we filled this auditorium with people and you couldn't get in, how would you, how would you get them to the pastor? Be creative. Give me an idea. Use the side door, okay? Okay. Oh, yell, yell, yeah. The four-letter word, yeah. Everyone you would... I'd step over with you. Okay, yeah, yeah. You can do like in a stadium, you know, where they pass the body on top of their heads. You know? Uh, yeah. Very good. Very creative. They were creative. You know, you can just kind of see these guys that they came to the door and they couldn't get in. And some guy, one of the four said, well, maybe a window. No, we can't get in there either. Well, what other ideas do you have? Well, maybe the roof. And can you, you know, you can just think uh, what they're thinking. 
uh, well, that's crazy. You know, uh, we're going to get in trouble. You know, all this type of stuff. Uh, Jesus is in there. You know, just all these different things. But they were very creative in uh, getting Jesus, uh, getting them to G getting them to Jesus. So next, uh, no excuses. This next quality is no excuses. I want you to count these different excuses that they could have come up with. We don't know, but uh, we're just we're just thinking about this. Uh, number one, so I want you to count, okay? Number one, uh, we can't get them in through the door, okay? Two. So that's one, okay? How about a window? No, there's too many people. Two. So two. Uh, how about letting them down through the ceiling or the roof? No, that's crazy. It's three. Uh, that's going to make the owner of the house really mad. Plus, he could yell at us while we're taking apart his ceiling. Number four, the ceiling might partially fall on some people inside and some people could get hurt. It's five, if we take apart the roof, then the owner is going to make us pay for repairing the roof. Or even worse, we ourselves might have to take time off to repair uh, the roof and lose money. So that's six excuses they could have come up with. But they did it anyway. Why? Do whatever it takes. We've got to get this, this uh, guy to Jesus. You know where Jesus was living in this uh, village for a year and a half. Another excuse could have been what? Right today. Let's take him tomorrow. Or the day, you know, in, on the weekend when I have some free time. No, but he had to get to Jesus today. Today. Uh, next, they were they were daring. They were daring. Have you ever done something daring? Uh, maybe in school, uh, in, maybe in high school or something, someone dared you to do something. Have you ever been daring and taking someone to Jesus, leading them? Maybe somebody you work with, and you've never talked about Christ, and you bring them up. Uh, by the way, there's a... Uh, uh, Several good ways to share. If you you know uh, the word goodbye, right? Do you know the etymology of goodbye? Where it came from? In England, hundreds of years ago, they used to say, God be with ye. God be with you. As they parted ways. So, several hundred years ago, they used to say, God, go with God, basically. Go with God. But now we've shortened it. God be with ye to goodbye. So when you tell someone goodbye, say, hey, do you know where the, the etymology of that word, where it came from? Say, they used to say, God be with ye. So God, God go with you. So uh, that's just a good way to make the uh, conversation with a non-believer. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, Facebook will have a dare. Uh, Y'all remember the um, ALS uh, cold water, you know, where they poured the bucket on top. You remember that a couple of years back? They raised, um, I think it was like $115 million in that uh, challenge. So people gave to ALS. And you know, this eight-week challenge, they found five new genes because uh, they raised $118 million. You know, I, I give you a, a dare. I'll dare you this morning to share your faith with a non-believer. Share your faith with a non-believer. You can ask somebody, uh, when were you born? And in fact, I'll just uh, do that. When, when's your birthday? March. March 1980? Oh, 1990. Okay, I gave you an extra 10 years. Uh, 1990, right? So what happened 1,990 years before you were born? What happened 1,990 years before he was born? Jesus was born. Do you know that every time you write the date on a check or put the date somewhere, we are saying from that, from that year, so many years, you know, 2,020 years, or, you know, this year, 2,020 years ago, Jesus was born. So our birth date, our birth years are connected with whose? Jesus. That's a, that's a good way to make the transition to the gospel. 
Like, when's your birthday? Well, why were you born in, you know, 1990? Um, not why were you born, but, you know, your, your birth year is connected to Jesus' birth year. So, uh, that's a, a way to, to share the gospel. You know, um, the gospel says the, the harvest is plentiful. You believe that? Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to believe, isn't it? Because we run across a lot of people uh, that don't want to hear. They don't want to hear. But Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. What's the problem? The workers. The workers are few. The laborers are few. But, you know, we are the workers. We are the workers. What would happen if each one of us left today and shared with one person in the next month? And that person accepted Christ. The church would double in size. Double in size. Amen. Amen. Anyway, as I, as I uh, just want to wrap up here, I just want to challenge you to be like these, these four guys who carried their friend to Jesus. Uh, they, they didn't have, they didn't make up excuses. They wanted to get him today. They dug through a, a ceiling. I mean, can you imagine uh, digging through a ceiling and lowering them down next Sunday in front of the pastor? That, that would be a big risk, wouldn't it? <laughs> but they did it. They did it. And we don't know the consequences of those four guys. Were they believers? Were they followers? Or did they accept Christ when they saw their friend get up and walk out? He got up and walked out. Amen? So, anyway, I just challenge you to, to be a witness, to be a, a light in the darkness this week, that you would go and, and share your faith. So, all right. Well, let's pray. Father, we just uh, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Just thank you for these four men who carried their friend to Jesus. They were truly uh, best friends forever. Father, we thank you that uh, we still have freedom in this country. We have the freedom to share. We can go out from this church today and we can share the good news of Jesus. We can tell someone uh, maybe the etymology of goodbye or, or why they were, uh, why their birth year is, is so-and-so. Father, we thank you that we uh, have the light in our hearts and we can share it. Thank you so much that you have died for us so that we can have true freedom in you. That true freedom is forgiveness of sins. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name. I just want to share real quick that uh, if any of you do not have a personal relationship with, with Jesus, uh, you don't know what it's like to follow him. Um, Pastor and I, we would love to talk with you and, and share with you more about that.